If you ask ChatGPT about implicit bias, it will say this. Implicit bias refers to the unconscious associations or attitudes that affect our understanding, actions, and decisions about others, often leading to prejudiced behavior without intentional discrimination. It is problematic because it perpetuates systemic inequality and undermines fair treatment, often without the awareness of individuals harboring such biases. But while artificial intelligence may know what it is in theory, it, it exhibits it in practice. When we searched for happy and unhappy people, the AI image for happy was a man. The person in the unhappy image, a woman. We looked at good leaders and bad leaders, both for white men. The bad leader is, however, noticeably older than the good one. We also searched the term follower, which gave us a woman. Searching professional chef also returned an image of a white man, but the phrase fast food worker yielded images of a woman and a black man. Rhea Kaluri and Myra Chang are artificial intelligence, intelligence researchers at Stanford. They've studied this issue at length. Myra, let's t take a step back here. How does this, how does artificial intelligence get this um, information in the first place? It's a great question. So essentially these kinds of generative models, they're trained on huge corpuses of internet data. Um, so just like web data of whatever people are posting on the internet is what the model learns from. And then when you give the model a prompt, let's say of an attractive person or a happy person, it'll usually be aligned with the previous examples that the model has seen of these images. So for example, if all the images on the internet of a happy person are usually men, then that will also translate to the images that people see when they're asking for these queries. Um, yeah, and so like, if you have different aspects of that, then those different aspects will also be pulled from different aspects of the data. And so Rhea, what does this tell us about so if these images are being taken, do, are they taken from just what all of us are, are populating in, say, social media? Or do they tend to reflect the data set from um, more professional publications and culture and, and things that wouldn't be user generated necessarily, but would be more official? Yeah, so one answer to this question is we don't actually know what the people who are creating these models are using as their snapshot of the internet's data. We know that they're sort of using these huge, huge corpora, like Myra was saying, of images and text. Usually that means images that already have captions on the internet. Um, that's often places that uh, take the time to put alt text in their images put to put captions on. But we don't know. Uh, a lot of these are, sometimes these are sourced from large sites that have what they have done is said that they have captured a good snapshot of the internet. Other times we have no idea. We know some biases include that these quote unquote snapshots are usually concentrated on the US and other sort of Western nations. And we know they include pornographic content, toxic content. So clearly it's not somehow magically getting filtered out into a clean data set. And so Myra, what are the, what are the implications here of this if it stays as it is? I think we were especially concerned about this because, you know, everyone's talking about AI, everyone's talking about how these models are being used in a lot of different ways. And so even when these biases might be subtle, they're really showing up everywhere. And they're even showing up when you're not looking for them at all, right? Because when people are looking for, you know, smart or uneducated, they're not actually asking for any sort of particular bias, but it's just showing up. And so if this is happening on the massive scale of millions of users or even billions of users, then that's going to be showing up in every aspect of society. And so Rhea, briefly, where do we go from here? How does this get fixed? And is it a hard fix or an easy one? I think it's an incredibly hard fix. I think what these models are showing us are that some uh, biases are so intertwined, like, for example, certain nations and war, uh, a, a nation that's historically been colonized and war, right? That image, you can't see an Iraqi person not in war. You can't see a disabled person in a position of leadership. It's just hard, but also almost impossible to create sort of this alternative image um, I would say the first step is getting out as much of this information as we can to the broader public. There's so many kind of magical narratives about AI floating around reporting like this. And all of the research like we're doing is to shift that knowledge to the people who need to be making that decisions for themselves.
Maria Kaluri and Myra Chang. Thank you both for joining me. It was fascinating. Thank you, John.